Welcome back to Gaming with the Hackets. Uh, one of you guys commented saying that it was they were having issues connecting the turbine, so I wanted to run through that. So I'm just going to start a new game, do a simple startup like we always do, and then we're going to show paralleling the turbine. And then I think I'm going to talk about some different um, upgrades. Okay, I can open this this time. Okay. New operating mode established. Take that to nominal. nominal We're just gonna activate all our panels. So someone was saying on the discussion board that the vacuum pump just gives a place for the steam to actually go to, so pressure doesn't like, you know, block the steam or whatever. It's really about maximizing efficiency. So if you're at a vacuum, you can draw out more energy from the steam on your turbine blades than you can if it was not. The Plus, coolant has started to circulate. when you do that, you can actually get some sort of condensate depression, which actually makes it a subcooled liquid which is better for your pumps and everything. Uh, most pumps are liquid cooled, and the liquid is uh, actually water. So, I'm gonna go ahead and request a startup so we don't have the issues that they might have. What does this say? No power in cooling turbine. Just when I hit that, but okay. Now we'll just wait for some pressure to come up. We'll fast forward. We've met the conditions for our startup, and then once we start up, I'll show the paralleling the turbine again, just so it's really clear, and we'll discuss all the turbine properties uh, when I walk through it. So yeah, the condensate depression just makes sure the liquid subcooled helps cool your pumps because the pump is spinning with a motor and that motor has to penetrate into like the actual pump housing so they have water coming out of that which actually cools the bearing. You need the bearings to keep your pump from wobbling. If you don't have bearings, your pump's not going to last because it's going to be bouncing around and rubbing on stuff. So. Uh, the condensate depression actually helps keep the, the pumps cooled and then if you have a pump that's operating with like high temperatures then you need some sort of external cooling on that bearing otherwise the bearing will heat up and it could seize so the vacuum helps lower the temperature for that so you don't have your turbines seizing and burning up. Yes, I know, high pressure. It almost feels like it's not fast forwarded. The reactor has reached critical mass. But I know and it its is. its status has changed to reactive. Bravo. Okay, so. I'll just wait a little bit. Okay, we're at 50%, so I'll probably go 40% on my pump just for right now. So, medium 40, start number three, make sure our condenser is operating. Okay, so we're at 40. Now it's going up quite a bit, as it should, so we can get back up in band. It'll slow down eventually. Probably middle of band, I'd say. Maybe not. Okay, we'll go down to 35. Still going up, huh? Okay. 32. 
coming down slightly. Okay, so let's look at our turbine now. After I check this, okay. We'll be looking at 16. Mm, let's go 98. I know that'll keep us in the. Yeah. Okay, so turbine properties, right? Amperage, can't really do anything with that. The voltage, you can adjust it, but if you're at the correct RPM, it's going to be 2200 volts. The frequency you can change, and then your kilowatts you can change by putting more steam onto the turbine. So you'll see it come up to 51 hertz. Okay, now you have to parallel the turbine. So I think we gotta, no, oh, we gotta speed up. So I guess that says this way you're going too slow, this way you're going too fast. So, whoop, up, oh. there. Get these lights in sync in reality. Like if you were to parallel a turbine, you can have it moving slow in the fast and you just shut this breaker at the 12 o'clock position really like 10 to or 11 to 1 and you just click close now they're paralleled you're producing amps volts amps is you know power for a DC circuit and if there's a power factor in there with um, AC I think also the square root of 3 but for simple, simple, you know, simplicity, amps times volts is going to be your power. So now, say we want to juice more power out of this turbine. What do we got to do? Well, when you look at our steam generator, okay, that's a little low, so we can increase this, which will raise pressure a little bit. It will come down at first because you're adding more cold water to actually raise the level. But eventually this will balance out with the heat input and the steam pressure. So as you can see we're at 58.15. Well there's stuff called I squared R losses so basically your uh, it's non-usable power that is being eaten up so resistance creates heat and that's what's happening so these wires all have resistance the power transformers have resistance you know the brushes on the the generator has resistance all those things come into play and you actually lose power so if you look here this is what's getting output 5240 kilowatts come over here 5241 pretty much the same thing. It might have went up one while I was talking on oh, F5 now. So so how do you squeeze more out? Well, you got a couple things. You can increase your coolant pump speed. If you have multiple loops, you can add another turbine, which will also increase the power. And then you could also sorry if you're using your resistor banks you can turn them off and send more power or if you need to kill power you can use your resistor banks but if you are generating over 5,000 of what you need that'll destroy your resistor bank if you don't have more than one and then also you can also bypass your turbine so if you If you bypass it a little, it should go up, not or down. There we go. Okay, it's coming down. So now we're coming lower. All right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I forgot about the rods. Whoop! Wrong way. I think 99 is pretty good. Let's see. Uh, it's coming down slightly, but.
still slightly positive. So we'll go 99.2. That should bring the temp back down. Okay, so if we raise coolant flow, we'll, sh we'll see what happens. You have to adjust three things. You're going to have to adjust your rod height for the temperature, and then also your steam generator flow. Because you're putting more heat in, you'll start burning up. Not burning up, but you'll be evaporating more water. So more boiling due to the heat. You could see this temperature gauge, it'll go up. That means your pressure's going to go up. Which then means your pressure to your turbine's going to go up. Also, the temperature in the turbine is going to go up, and ultimately your power is going to go up. I don't think you can overspeed this with one loop. But I guess we'll find out because we're going to be at 100%. So, temperature is coming back down. As you can see, we're below reactivity, so you're going to have to raise the rods a little bit. Okay, we'll keep that there for right now. Check our power. Check our generator. Still going down. Let's go to 85. Okay, so let's keep an eye on this frequency. Make sure it doesn't go up too much. As you can see, right? This torque meter, we're in the red, so we're generating a lot of torque, more than we should be for that that turbine. So that's going to start damaging the turbine, and also it can cause your RPM to go up. Oh, and I'm bypassed, so let's unbypass that and see what happens. Check our steam generator real quick. A little low. So we'll go up a bit. Okay, that's good. Okay. So now we're not bypassed. We're generating just shy of 1200. So this will be an example. So say your RPM was going up. That's going to cause power to go up, voltage to go up, and then your frequency to go up. So if this starts going up, and right here you can see the RPM of the machine, and then this is like the ordered RPM, you can click this down. It says press and hold, but that's still not fixed yet. So you can bring it back down and say this was like still 3100 you could go lower on this and then it'll even it out so just go until your frequency is at 5100 or yeah 5100 hertz that would be really fast 51 hertz so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that helps you parallel your turbine okay might as well bypass this a bit so the turbine doesn't break on me while I'm talking about upgrades now. So I was trying to do the upgrades and the thing just kept going wild. Everything was going wrong. Alarms, alarms, alarms. So I'm just going to do this fresh, tack it onto the other video. It's going to look weird, you know. Hey, why is everything shut off? <laughs> I started a new file just so I could talk about upgrades because the thing would not stop alarming and I had to keep going and shutting it off and very very annoying. So we're just going to talk upgrades. Super easy, super quick, no big deal. First upgrades you're going to even be able to buy are going to be the power increase for the pumps and I think also yeah your diesels. Those are going to be the first ones you can actually get. Freight pumps as well. They're all pretty cheap. Then, the next ones you can get 
believe, are the time reduction ones for the diesels. So that's going to reduce the amount of time it actually takes to um, start up. Okay. So after that, let's see. Oh, yeah. Maybe this power increase for your turbine would be the best way to go. All the resistance upgrades are ridiculously expensive, so. Except this one. No, that, yeah, 72,000. Okay, that's not too bad. So it looks like pump powers, then generator power, then time reduction, and then maybe resistance increase on your steam generators and your turbines for the power. And after that, Everything's really expensive, so you're going to be operating for a while just to get any more upgrades. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Channel's doing really well. Might have to make a 100 subscriber video. I don't, I don't even know what I would do for that. 100, 100 meltdowns, 100 deaths? No, I don't know. Um, but yeah, thanks for your guys' support. I appreciate it, and you know, keep liking. If you want to subscribe, that's great, and uh, I appreciate everything that you guys do for me, honestly. This is kind of crazy. I didn't even think I'd have, you know, five subscribers, so. Anyways, that's Gaming with the Haggits. This is with the new Galaras, and uh, I'll probably start playing some other games, too. I was thinking of Subnautica. I don't know if you guys would even be interested. You can let me know in the comments. Alright, thanks, guys. Bye.